Hello everyone, Jabman025 here. Today I'm doing a review of my 54th Master Grade, the Goof version 2.0. This is Rambaral's Goof from the original Mobile Suit Gundam. This kit came out a little over a year ago, and when it came out I thought it was a little overpriced, so I decided to pass on it, but recently Hobby Link Japan had a sale on where if you pay with PayPal you get the shipping for free, so I decided it's a good time to pick this up. So, got it, and built it, and we're going to see what it looks like. Bad news first. Bad news is, like a lot of Zaku's, Goof's, and Xeon suits, it has these links on the cable, and each link is attached to the tree, so there's a ton of nubs on those. Other bad news, despite this being a 2.0, we have some issues with the legs in terms of moving forward. The skirt armor doesn't allow a whole lot of movement. Upper torso, you get a little bit of movement, but not bad. But moving the legs around has some issues, but considering the old kits couldn't barely move at all, that's not too bad. In terms of moving the legs back, however, whole different story. The skirt armor separates in a whole bunch of pieces and can move out, and you get a lot more back movement in terms of legs. Not much moving it forward, but in terms of back, 10 time improvement over the original goof. The ankles are very, very nice on this kit, very stable, and lots of movement. No real balance issues with this kit. The feet have a splint in it, so you can get a little more movement out of that. But the legs, aside from moving forward because of the skirt armor, are very nice. Now you do get some clear pieces, not many. First clear piece goes into the chest for the cockpit area. You do get a clear piece for the eye. I do not use the stickers on the eye. I usually just color them so it gives it a red color. I like that look more. The mono eye moves with the head. So as you move it side to side, so with the mono eye, and you get a little bit of up and down movement to boot. The arms, you get a very nice bend out. You can do a very good bend on that. The right hand is fully articulated. Shoulders move out of the way, which is a one of the bigger problems with the old goof kits, the shoulders get in the way, but they can move on this one. On the left hand, you get the bazooka style hand, as with the show. Each finger is articulated, but the fingers will not bend, because, now well, they're guns. But, very nice arms, and the shoulders is what really made me happy on this kit. The shoulders were always a huge problem with the old kit. Now you can see I decaled this kit up pretty good. This is one of those kits that looks good with or without decals. Just your personal choice whether you want to do them or not. I like decals on my kit, so I went to town on this thing. Put decals all over it. The decals on the shoulders are particularly difficult to do, so be careful if you do those. But for the most part, no problems with decals in this kit. A lot of nice variety, and they give you a few bonus ones just in case you want to use them. For accessories, you get the shield, and it has that one big Xeon decal on the front. The, it has a latch onto the arm, hooks on just fine, no problems there. You get this giant beam sword, which you can take the blade off and insert the handle into the shield itself, and it hooks right in there as so. And once it's hooked in, it won't fall out. No real problems in terms of holding the sword or the shield, no issues there. The shield has a nice firm latch that hooks onto the arm, and their right hand is the exact same hand as the RX-78-2 version 2.0, so a nice strong plug for the sword. No problems there. Now, for the other accessory, the heat rod. The heat rod plugs into the arm section you have there on the right hand, and building it involves a ton of little poly caps, which you hook one right into the other. There you can see the cable there, and you just hook one into the other, into the other, into the other, and it keeps going all the way around. And once you finish, this is the maximum length you get. You can shorten this to whatever length you want, but that is the max length you get right there. And since it's just a whole bunch of poly caps, you can get a ton of posability, move it around in any direction you so desire. And there you see it hooked into the arm. It looks really nice. It's one of the neat features about this kit. You don't get a whole lot of accessories, basically the shield, the sword, and the heat rod, and that's about it. But I really thought the heat rod was just going to be a big chunk of plastic, but actually it's a whole lot of 
the little pilot caps hooked one into the other, and it turned out really nice. I was really pleased with this. Later incarnations of the Goof completely removed the heat rod from the equation, so if you like that weapon, you pretty much have to get this version of the Goof. For my final thoughts on this kit, I'm going to give this kit a thumbs up, but I'm going to say only pick it up if you can find it for the right price. Like I said, I think it's a little overpriced personally. In some places, with shipping, this will cost north of $50, and I think that's a little ridiculous. I only paid 40 bucks for it with the sale that was on at Hobby Link Japan. That's a little bit more reasonable for this kit. It has some posability issues, but for the most part, good. And it doesn't have a whole lot of accessories, but the accessories they give you are really nice. So, it's a pretty good kit when all is said and done. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please stay tuned for more. I always got more reviews coming. Please leave a comment. I really do love reading them, and I will see you next time. Oh, and uh, one more thing. This is a Zaku. This is a Zaku. This is a Zaku. Say it with me, everyone. This is no Zaku, boy. No Zaku.